Chair, and I recognize Ms. Stansberry from New Mexico. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would like to make some points for the record on this amendment and on this proceeding this evening. And I want to start off by first saying to my colleagues across the aisle, welcome back to Washington, D.C. I know it's late, and I know a bunch of you have been traveling. You are on the road today, and I know you must be tired. Uh, you all were visiting Donald Trump's trial today to defend his porn star hush money case. And in fact, we have some cute pictures of you here today, and I, they are some cute pictures, so congratulations, and also some from the last few days. And it looks like you guys had a good time in the courtroom today, but you know what? I don't know, the speaker looks a little bit stressed here. I mean, it's a lot, right, to ask someone who's facing a criminal trial and running for president to ask his political allies to travel over 200 miles on a voting day here in Congress to pop up to New York and snap some cute pictures to defend him because the judge has ordered him to stop threatening the jurors in his own trial. I mean, some might actually view this as direct interference in a criminal court case. It's not exactly law and order, as our friends like to talk about all the time. But I want to just take a moment to let you all know what you missed today while you were up in New York. You missed some votes. Yeah, you weren't here. You didn't, you didn't show up for votes. You didn't vote on some of the bills that you claimed were your priorities, some of your public safety and border bills. I mean, I can see you had some important business to take care of here today. And as the ranking member noted, the chairman did manage to find time today after they canceled the hearing this morning to have his political fundraising team send out this fundraising email. And I do genuinely hope you made some good money off of it because, you know, we're not actually supposed to use the resources that the taxpayers uh, fund in this committee to fundraise off of. But it does really make you wonder why we're sitting here at 10.30 at night after this is the activities that the GOP were engaged in earlier today when we were supposed to be having this hearing. These fundraising emails went out. Why are we here? Why are we using taxpayer official resources in this committee right now? I mean, could it be political? I mean, it would make sense why you guys rescheduled and skipped votes and went up to New York, and here we are. And if there's any indication that this impeachment scheme is in its flop era, I mean, I don't know what is. This committee has spent 17 months reviewing 3.8 million pages of documents. 3.8 million pages of documents, 80 hours of recorded testimony, and not turned up a single shred of evidence in this impeachment scheme. And yet you still had time to go to Donald Trump's trial where he's about to be convicted. And so, you know, I think it's very clear what all of this is about. The GOP is using this committee and its resources to make countless misleading and false statements to try to spin a political narrative to fundraise off of it in a blatantly partisan effort to support Donald Trump's re-election. And I mean, if you need any evidence, it's right here behind me. So I thought it was important to really set the record straight on this. This is not a taxpayer-funded campaign effort. And if you needed any evidence that that is what the majority is involved in here, I think it's very clear that that is what this hearing is all about, or we wouldn't be sitting here at 10.30 at night after your little field trip. And with that, I yield back.